Look at my Star Trek toys. Okay, folks, we are back for part two two of my playmates wish list if you uh if you missed our last episode of 40 to 31 it's down there somewhere click on the youtubes you'll find it but uh what we're doing here today is we are telling playmates toys which just got the license what we want now i, I should specify that uh obviously we want them to make figures of Enterprise and Discovery and all the subsequent shows after the 90s figures. But I'm focusing on this, on my collection, on the era of figures from the regular four and a half inch collection. So I'm talking about Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Now I know there's gonna be lots of original series ones uh, that people are gonna want too, but uh, just to keep it somewhat contained in my head. I have limited it to those three series. So if you're wondering, eh, but what about that weird alien from Kirk's era? Well, this is not this is not the time for that. We'll do another episode of that. So uh, yeah, so this is what I want Playmates to make. And this is going to be 30 through 21. Let's take a look at number 30. Who is it? Who is it? Folks, it is Shinzon from Star Trek Nemesis. We talked last episode that we want Viceroy, of course, and you can't have Viceroy without Shinzon, who, uh, of course, is a clone of Picard, who goes uh, super evil and sort of, you know, killed off the uh, Next Generation series of movies. Ooh. Played, of course, by Tom Hardy before he Skinny was Tom super... Hardy. Skinny Tom Hardy. I just watched him in Band of Brothers, which I think mm -hmm. was the first thing he ever did. What a cast they had. Anyway, off topic, uh, but certainly it's a figure Look that at other that costume. It's really remarkable. I mean, it's it's like this crazy leather S and M thing, but it's also like purple and green, uh, it's Romulan colors. I don't know. It's really really intense and would make for a great figure. And I know other companies have made figures of it, but I want it four and a half inch scale in the 90s style, so he can hang out with the guys on my bookshelf behind me. Speaking of people, I would like to hang out with sort of number 29. It is Ruafo from Star Trek Insurrection. This is the big bad from Nemesis to the big bad from Insurrection, played by F. Murray Abraham, Oscar winner. Oh, yeah. F. Murray Abraham, with his uh, skin all peely, I mean, you know, it makes for a great figure. Like these weird extreme characters. It uh, should be really fun. And Nemesis just didn't get figures made in that scale. And, uh, I mean, Insurrection didn't, or neither did Nemesis, frankly. Uh, but it definitely feels like a whole. Because I've got Khan, and I've got all the other guys from that era. And it's, you know, you gotta complete the series. So, uh, who wouldn't want the big bad from you know, Star Trek Insurrection? Slightly, but the last two screenshots... And hopefully the figures will help prove the 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 multitude of difference in budget between television and feature film. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the for costuming sure. Costuming on these characters, the detailing is absolutely insane. Yeah. No. 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 For sure. I mean, and they they did tremendous work with the makeup on the television series, but their budget was a fraction right. of what it is on the films. So let us continue forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. With number 28 Ooh. from Star Trek Voyager, it's Arturis from the episode Hope and Fear, played by character actor Ray Wise. And this was a season finale, uh, really cool and fascinating episode. This guy comes in, he's, he's, I've got this amazing technology, I can get you home. No problem, and I want that to happen. And uh, as it turns out, it might not be... It, it might just be too good to be true, uh, but a really fascinating character, uh, an alien here who's super, super smart. If you see him from the side, he's got a huge, like, extra protuberance on the back of his head for his super big brain. Hmm. Okay. It's kind of like you, Keith. It, yes. There's Well, there's, there's definitely protuberances, but uh, I don't know about the brain part. Anyway, uh, really, uh, really fun episode. Let's continue forward to number 27. Who is it? 
It's Cassidy Yates. I can't believe they never made a Cassidy Yates figure from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Uh, recurring character who becomes a major character and uh, possibly a love interest for our good Ooh, friend Captain Sisko. Okay. All right. And of, of course, that's Penny Johnson Gerald from, uh, most people know from her performance on the first season of 24, where she was great. Um, also the Larry Sanders show. And uh, now she's on the Orville. So oh, cool. Lots of good sci-fi and really good television. Uh, who doesn't want a Cassidy Yates? You can't have the. You got to complete the family. Give us our Cassidy Yates. All right, number twenty-six from my favorite episode of Star Trek of all time. Wow! It's Captain Garrett from the Next Generation episode, Yesterday's Enterprise. And frankly, you could make. Every single character in this show a figure, and I would buy it because it is such a good episode. But this is the uh, heroic but ill-fated captain of the Enterprise C, who comes forward in time, uh, coming up with the D, altering the history of the universe, propelling us into a dark, apocalyptic war future because they did not fulfill the role they had to in history, bringing back an important character who might have gotten a figure. There's only 1,701 of. It's a, uh, yeah. So it's a fantastic, fantastic episode. And uh, Captain Garrett was great. You know, it was it was early in Star Trek to have a female captain who was tough as nails and heroic, and I thought uh, was deserves to be commemorated in a figure. So, let us continue forward to number 25. It's another alien incognito. It's Troy as a Romulan. Huh. This is, uh, I'm surprised they didn't make this one. Yeah, it feels from, like they should have. Because we, we, we had Picard and Data as Romulans, and this is from the Next Generation episode, Face of the Enemy, where uh, Troy wakes up and she's uh, been surgically altered to look like a Romulan and has to... Uh, do this whole big uh, secret plot masquerading as a Romulan uh, commander without having any <laughs> future awareness of it. So she's just like plopped into the universe like, oh, you have to pretend to be this commander. Three, two, one, go. It was a really fun, exciting episode. And uh, I mean, I, it's a cool figure. I mean, the Romulans are cool. And who doesn't want a Marina Sirtis as a Romulan? She's awesome. Let us continue with number 24. Folks, it's Captain Ransom from the Voyager Equinox, part one and two. Uh, really interesting and dark uh, season finale and premiere of Voyager, where they run across, surprise, another Federation ship. But things have gotten pretty bleak on the other ship. And so we have a captain here who may or may not have turned a little bit evil and uh, certainly a fascinating uh, storytelling and uh, deserving of a figure. Give me my Captain Ransom figure. Uh, more like Captain Handsome, am I right? Am yeah, I it's John right? Savage if you're counting at home. Speaking of uh, Star Trek Voyager and maybe a little bit evil, let's look at number 23. The evil Star Trek Voyager crew Ooh, okay. from the terrific episode Living Witness in which uh, our holographic doctor gets turned on on this other planet 500 years in the future and this other planet uh, thought they were destroyed by the Voyager crew and so they show the doctor a holographic simulation of what they think happened and uh, so we get to meet super evil, cruel, diabolical versions of our entire cast. And it uh, was really, really fun. Everybody got a chance to sort of, uh, you know, cackle and cowl about. And that was good fun. So this is one of those one of those figures. This isn't just one figure. This is a whole box set of the main cast of Voyager. You're going to make some money on this one. Okay, you no, know. hold on, hold on. I got a timeout no. here. Yeah. Now... I love the idea. I love the premise. Now, Keith, I'm going to put you on the spot. Since okay. you're talking directly to Playmates here. We're going right I to am. the source. You're talking to yeah. the actual... Uh, Mr. Playmate. Yeah, Mr. Playmate. Keith, how do, you, how do you indicate on the models that they are evil and not just the regular crew? 
Oh, well, you will see it in the costuming. You will see that Janeway has sort of a short buzz cut and she wears black gloves. And she has, so there are all sorts of, most of it is all done in the hair, makeup, and costuming, which is really cool because they get a lot of things wrong. So Chakotay's tattoo is all wrong and their hair is all dark and evil and they're wearing black gloves. So you could totally do it. You just have to follow the terrific costume and makeup work from the episode Living Witness. All right. That's how you do it. All right. Boy, we're doing a lot of bad guys. 30 through 21. It's all the baddies. Here it is. Number 22, Moriarty. Whoa. From the Next Generation episode, Elementary Dear Data, or <laughs> Dear Daya, as oh, I wrote uh -oh. it there on the screen. <laughs> well, that, make, that just makes this episode, Keith, that much more... Uh, uh, unique and collectible. Because it's got an error in it. Because it's got an error, yeah. I think Moriarty did it. So, <laughs> so Mike, are, are you wondering, how is Moriarty on Star Trek? I believe that he is, if I'm not mistaken, on the holodeck, he's Data's foil when Data does his Sherlocking in the holodeck, correct? He does indeed. And uh, it was a great episode in season two, uh, early. And then they were afraid to bring Moriarty back because they thought they were going to get sued. As it turned out, they wouldn't, So they, but they didn't bring him back until, I think, season six. Uh, but great, fascinating character played by Daniel Davis from The Nanny, if you're, uh, if you're counting at home. Uh, but a really, really, really cool episode. And I love the follow-up, too, uh, where he's sort of fighting for his right to exist as a holographic character. Uh, you know, which is expl ex explored through the entire... Uh, 90s Star Trek world. So that's fun. Coming up next, number 21, the last of this episode. I know, I'm disappointed too. It's Lore in Descent. So from the Next Generation episode, The Descent Part 2, Lore, of course, is Data's evil twin. And you're saying, yeah, but Keith, they made a Lore figure. They sure did. But he was he was wearing those weird robes from uh, I forget that episode where they you know the uh, the the old data shows up. This uh, he's got these cool Borg inspired foam suit, which I think they probably didn't mean to look as foam as it does in the <laughs> screenshot. But it's a really cool outfit, and I think like Lord deserves to look a little bit more badass than he does in the figure they released of him. So there it is, folks. You have now watched 30 through 21 of the top 40 figures I want Playmates to make. If you enjoyed this, or even if you didn't, like and subscribe. I I I'm happy if you lie to me. That's fine. Smash and, that bell. Uh, yeah, smash that bell. Leave us a comment below. Who did we miss? Who, did, uh, who, sh who, who shouldn't be on the list? Who's too high? Who's too low? We would love to have the discussion with you. And we will see you uh, later with the top 20 wish list from the Playmates Toy Revival. And in the meantime, you have been watching... Look at my Star Trek toys!